This video will discuss what the Clinical Key Database is and how best to use it for your research needs. The wonderful thing about Clinical Key is that it has just about everything. Of course, this is also the super frustrating part. There's just so much, and searching it can be difficult. But there really is no other source owned by the library that can search this much health information at once, and we'll cover strategies to make the searching easier. It's important to mention that Clinical Key was created primarily for physicians, so there isn't a ton of content specific to nursing or other allied health fields. Even so, you can still find a lot of useful information. With all the textbooks in Clinical Key, it's very easy to get background information on a topic. And I'm going to demo this in a minute, but when you need an impressive image, chart, or diagram for a PowerPoint, Clinical Key can really deliver. And Clinical Key has over 500 full text journals. So, if you needed a PDF article on topic and you needed it like five minutes ago, it's a great place to start. Here is the homepage of Clinical Key. Keep in mind that if you don't access this database through the ISU Library website, you will need to purchase a subscription. You can run a search here and search all of their resources at once, or you can immediately limit by selecting All Types. We're going to start big here and not choose any limiters, at least not yet. So let's say we need to do research on cardiomyopathy. I'm just going to go ahead and start typing it into Clinical Key. It's going to try to read my mind and determine what it thinks I really want to find. Cardiomyopathy is listed here, but there's a lot of ways to make it more specific. So I'm just going to keep it broad and hit search. One thing I do want to point out before we really get started is sometimes you will find a source with a link to Fairy's Clinical Advisor. If you click on it, it will bring up the table of contents for this textbook. This is a really great platform to search if you want a basic overview of a topic. As you can see, you will find many common diseases and disorders and even some medical terminology listed here. If we go down to the C's, we will find cardiomyopathy, and I'm just going to choose dilated. When I click on that, you will see that over here on the left, you can limit directly to a specific aspect of this condition, like the diagnosis, or you can just read through the whole topic. Another way to get to this page and access this textbook is to type in Fairy's Clinical Advisor in the original search box and select the table of contents. Okay, let's get back to our search. Depending on your topic, you will see a few hundred results to ten thousands of results. In this case, we have almost 25,000. That is way more than any sane person is ever going to go through, but if you're not, not all is lost and we can use these amazing limiters on the side to make things more specific. You can limit by source type, study type, specialties, dates, and they also have this feature over here where you can sort by relevance or you can sort by the date published. We're going to start over here on source type. Let's say I only want journal articles. 16,000 still. Again, way too much to search through. So we will limit by study type. A systematic review is the cream of the crop when it comes to evidence-based information. Meta-analyses and randomized control trials are great too, but generally not quite as credible. A narrative review is just an overview, which will bring in some of the most important research on a topic, but it won't go as in-depth as a systematic review. That being said, a narrative review is a really great place to start if you're new to a topic. Okay, we're down to 3,000 results. Still quite a lot. If I jump down here, I can narrow my search by specialty as well. This is a really nice feature that helps you narrow in on a particular topic area, or you can narrow in on dates. Very nice, because usually you're going to want the most recent information. I'm just going to keep it broad for now because I see something that I'm interested in right here. If I click on the title, Exercise Prescription for the Athlete with Cardiomyopathy, it will bring up the full text. Now I can select to view or download the PDF or print the full article. Alright, I'm going to go back to the results and clear out these limits. You may have noticed I skipped over this section. Here we have some great resources. First, the images. This is a super cool feature. These are images pulled from all the content in Clinical Key, all the articles, textbooks, and so on, and it's not only a great way to get more information, especially if you're a visual learner, but also if you need a professional image for a presentation or something similar, all you need to do is click on the image and then add it to your presentation. You do need to be logged into Clinical Key to do this. In order to create a login, you just need to go up to the login and register. Really easy. It's free, just create a username and password and you'll be good to go. Once you've added this to your presentation maker, then you can export it directly into PowerPoint. Really cool. The next source type we are going to look at is books. It's going to have a lot. There's more than 1,100 full textbooks in Clinical Key, 
So not surprisingly, you're gonna see a lot here. And the way that it usually brings it up is it'll bring up a specific book chapter, which is really convenient so you don't have to browse through the whole book looking for your topic. There are a couple of ways to limit when you're searching on books. The first way is to actually just look through the title list. The book chapter is listed first, and then the book title is listed in the smaller text. So you can just start browsing through and seeing what book titles are relevant to your topic. Maybe you're focusing on medicine. If so, this might be a great option. Keep in mind that I can still limit by specialty and by date. Let's just say I want to look at this particular one. I can read through the full book chapter right here on the screen or download the PDF. Downloading PDFs is similar to downloading images, so you will need to create a username and password and be logged in. Next, we have guidelines, which provide a really great overview on a topic. The Clinical Trials is an interesting feature because it searches a freely available database called clinicaltrials.gov, and it allows you to see what research is currently being done that might not yet be published. Videos can be hit or miss. Sometimes there's great ones, and sometimes there's, well, less than great. Clinical overviews will give you a list of related issues to cardiomyopathy and a synopsis of each. And if you work with any patients or are involved in patient care of any kind, the patient education feature is helpful as it explains over 15,000 different topics in an easy to understand and easy to read language. The drug monograph feature will bring up information about the medications that are commonly associated with this disease or condition. Procedure videos can be super helpful because they will take you step by step through a medical procedure. So, if we want to look at a diagnostic electrophysiology study, we can select this option. And here is the actual full video and description on how to go through the entire process. Very nice. Sometimes this is a much better way to learn than trying to read about it. And that's about it for searching clinical key. There is a lot of content, but many ways to make it manageable. For those of you who are familiar with PubMed or CINAHL or similar databases, you may be used to creating really fancy searches and combining terms and using subject headings. Clinical Key works best with a more simplified approach. You can add additional keywords, but don't use a ton of them and don't expect to see some of the more sophisticated search features that the other sources include. You can also browse some of what Clinical Key includes. To do that, we've gone back to the main page and under here, it lists Browse. Like I mentioned before, Clinical Key is great for the books because there are so many of them. This is sort of a limited search because it's only searching by title. It's not looking for abstracts or subject headings or anything like that. So you actually have to know the exact title or hope your topic appears in the title. If you do know the exact title, go ahead and search for it here or you can browse. But say maybe you're interested in knowing if Clinical Key has books on a certain subject area. An example might be in sleep medicine. So let's just start by typing sleep. And here's everything in the books that have the word sleep in the title. You can also browse journals. Same thing, it's only looking at the title. So if you happen to know the exact title you're looking for, great. Or like if we're looking for a topic like sleep medicine, you can type that in. And these are the journals that have sleep in the title. Okay, so quick overview of clinical key. You can search all of it by just putting your search in here and clicking on the little magnifying glass. Or you can immediately limit if you only want to find books, full text journals, multimedia, and so on. And don't be discouraged if you get a ton of stuff at first. That's going to be normal because there's so much in here. You can always add terms to your search or you can use those great limiters. If you're doing any kind of health related research, you need to be using clinical key. Don't hesitate to contact the ISU Library Health Sciences staff if you need any help.